uh, online quiz one. Uh, let's go ahead and review it. All right, so your first online quiz was this. Uh, what term relates to the strength of bonding interaction? That should be pretty straightforward. I don't have to go into more anything about that. That should be bonding energy, right? And in your book, it says bond energy. Bonding and bond energy are the same things. All right, which of the following results in great thermal stability? If you actually paid attention in class, when I talked about sugar and I talked about salt, you got this one right because I said salt has ionic bonds and sugar has covalent bonds, all right? So resulting from that, if you were to take two solids, a covalent solid and an ionic solid, put them in a pan, I said, which one would melt first? You all told me sugar. And I said, well, that's because salt has ionic bonds and in your book it says it creates great thermal stability. It had not even talked is this even in chapter four? Ah, oh, that was my other clue. Uh, the answer is no, all right? So even though that hydrogen bonds do prevent water and other things from having great fluctuation in uh, temperature, ionic bonding creates thermal stability. There's a difference between the bonding of that, and so forth. The greatest <coughs> thermal stability. Hydrogen bonding creates thermal stability, not the greatest, ionic bonding does. So I think a lot of people got that one wrong. So I wanted to go over that. Uh, which results from metal reacting with a non-metal? Um, shame on you if you got this wrong. Yep. Ionic compounds, all right? You got it wrong, Steven? No. Okay. Well, at first one. All right, so left of staircase, Right up staircase has to be ionic. All right, these are my metals. These are my non-metals. All right, so if you're correcting this, if you're correcting this, you can pull out the page you got from me on the email and put it into pages or notability and add some notes to it as well. Don't just find, don't just say, oh yeah, we got this, blah, blah, blah. You can do that, yes. Mr. Hay. Yes. I have a joke. Uh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> so the chemistry teacher asks, Timmy, can you tell me the formula for nitric oxide? And Timmy says, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. The formula is no. Oh, okay, there you go. I'm not even here right now. All right, number four. Thank you. All right, first of all, I saw a lot of you put this one. Not in chapter four. Okay, so that leaves it down to three. I don't even really, it talks a little bit about ionization energy. Straight definition, Coulomb's law. Straight definition. To calculate, lattice energy is not a calculation, and ionization energy isn't a calculation. These are not calculations. All right, that's an amount. That's a standard amount. <coughs> Coulomb's law is the only thing that you calculate something. What is the term best describe the distance between two bonds? Bond length. Hello. Uh, I'm in recording right now. Uh, all right, bond length. All right, just between the two bonds. Which type of bond results from the unequal sharing? I saw people get this one wrong, and then it tied into another one you got wrong later. All right, the one other one you got later. Here is the key, sharing. All right, only covalents share. All right, and that's why I was meandering around a lot to see what people were thinking, people switching. So that eliminates this right away, and we know that dipole-dipole is a simple intermolecular force. So you have two choices, polar, covalent, or covalent. Well, covalent, which we talked about, means Nonpolar. Polar is unequal, polar covalent. Okay? I, I'm just showing you how I would have done it, all right, if it was me. Which gives the atom the ability to attract shared electrons to itself? We talked about this at length. Um, electronegativity. All right, electronegativity. That's straight definition. 
So, so far, you really haven't had anything that's outside the box for a definition. Nothing. Everything is exactly from the book on to this point. All right. So number eight. Yes. So a lot of people get this one wrong. Which example would be an example that has the greatest dipole moment? If you read this in the text, you would know that dipoles only occur in what type of bond? It is polar covalent. I'm going to say polar. That's fine. But I'm saying I'm saying covalent because the the deal is you can't have a dipole moment when you completely transfer your electrons. So in these, which ones completely transfer their electrons? MGF and CaO completely transfer. It's ionic. Complete transfer. It's gone. So you're left with FF and IF. Well, FF is exactly the same thing, so it has to be nonpolar. At the greatest dipole moment would be IF. What do you have? You have I here, you have F. This is the Michaela example. This is when I had Michaela in front of the room and I was pulling her close, right? This electron is going this way. Remember doing this? Remember doing that? Yeah. All right, so IF. If you're classifying chlorine gas, how would you do it? I looked at this question, I was having fun, and I said, well, if they think that this is the right answer, they would never get this wrong. And I say, well, that has to be nonpolar covalent. It's the same thing. Same thing bonding to itself. All right. Nonpolar covalent. Which, when an atom gains electrons, it increases. Now, some of you got this wrong. Had some of you asked me about this. If I am fluorine, and I go from F, I gain an electron, and now I am F minus. What happens? <coughs> it's the same thing as you going home and eating a, a box of Twinkies. What's going to happen? Are you going to get bigger? Yeah. So is an atom. If you go home and you run 20 miles, are you going to get bigger or smaller? Same thing as an atom. You lose 20 electrons, you're going to get smaller. You gain 20 electrons, you're going to get bigger. So first of all, this gets bigger. But that is the question. So ion size is going to increase. Molecular size is not possible. Why? Why is molecular size not a right answer? I want you to think about this with me. Why? Because that would just make it a different atom. No. Because it says an atom in the question. Yeah, it says an atom. You can't be a molecule if you're an atom. Can't be a molecule if you're an atom. That's gone. All right? It increases electronegativity. You may have thought that. All right? <coughs> Let me ask you this. How much electronegativity does a noble gas have? Electronegativity does a noble gas have? Somebody think about it. Tell me. I heard it say it. None. The answer is none. Why? Why do they have no electronegativity? What is electronegativity? Yes? Because they already have eight. They already have eight. So we don't need to get eight. They already have eight. So if you go from seven valence electrons, you add one, plus one equals eight. Is fluoride now happy? So its electronegativity is going to decrease when you gain electrons, it decreases or lose. Covalent nature, I just threw that in there for whatever. All right, can't be covalent. Why can't it be covalent? Why can't it be covalent? Because it's an atom. An atom is not gonna have covalent nature, it's not sharing anything, all right? So ion size. All right, if a nitrogen atom gained three electrons, it becomes, all right, this is straight out of the book. It gained three electrons, so I go from seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I did that, I'm exactly, I have ten electrons. What am I like at that point? What am I like? If I have ten electrons, what element am I like? Neon. Neon. So it's isoelectric with neon. All right? 
meaning this. So if you were to write that out, you could say that, that N3 minus is equal to NE. Isoelectric with neon. Isoelectric means it has the same electrons. Same amount of electrons. So if I look at this, well, if it gave three electrons, how in the heck could it be positively charged? You have seven protons and 10 electrons. Can it be positively charged? No. Could it be polar? Could it be polar? Is there any way nitrogen by itself could be polar? Yes, no, maybe. I have no idea, Mr. Hayden. I am still thinking about what I'm going to be doing on Friday night. Could it be polar? Why? Why can it not be polar? It's not a molecule. All right? And could it be isoelectric with helium? Eh, maybe, but it would have to lose seven or five. So it would have to have lost five electrons. So the only thing that could be is that. All right, three more. All right, four more. 14. <laughs> All right. Almost done. Uh, when gaseous ions are packed together to form an ionic solid, there is a change in 100% straight definition lattice energy. All right. No. Compounding. Are you going to put on drywall? Um, and bond energy. No. Okay. Uh, match the correct statement. Now this, you're paying attention in class a little bit, doing what we did last class for bond energy, uh, paying attention to number two, watching the YouTube video if you weren't here. All right, oxygen will form a single bond. Well, we did this. All right, so how many bonding areas does it have? One, two bonding <coughs> areas has to form a double bond, so that's gone. Nitrogen will form a double bond. Well, here's nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five. Bonding area, bonding area, bonding area. Can't form a double bond with nitrogen. Oxygen will form a double bond. Yes. And fluorine can only form a single bond. Which of the following are correct? Oxygen has a total of one lone pair. So, okay, I'm gonna draw it. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many lone pairs does it have? Two. two. Fluorine has a total of two lone pairs. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does it have two? Does how many does it have? Three. three. Nitrogen has a total of two lone pairs. Nitrogen. We just did that. One, two, three, four, five. No, it has one. Chlorine has a total of three. One, two, three, <coughs> four, five, six, seven. It has three. Answer is seven. How many bonding pairs are there in nitrogen? Here's the answer right here. Here's the area. We're at, by definition in your book, it says a bonding pair is an atom, an electron that is not paired up in a lone pair. That's what it says. It has three. All right, it can bond three times. Actually, it can bond three times. All right, two or a couple left. 16 and 17. All right, most of you got this one right. I think everybody got this right. Anybody get this one wrong? Resonance? Got that wrong? You got that wrong? No. Oh. I think everybody got that right. What is it called when a structure can be written for a particular molecule? I haven't gone over it, so good. I, I definitely know it would be Octoon, baby. All right. Uh, each atom wants to have eight electrons. This was a gimme question. Octet. All right. Octet. All right. You have